G'day ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Draw with Jazza, I'm Jazza and in this video we're going to talk about how you can get the best sound possible for your videos, podcasts, streams and more. Now I've pulled a fast one on you in the intro of this video because I'm actually using the onboard DSLR microphone to my camera and as you can tell it sounds absolutely garbage. Okay, so with that example of terrible audio out of the way, I just wanted to start off like that to demonstrate how quickly the uh, quality of content is degraded simply by bad audio. Whether you're recording YouTube videos, a podcast, recording voices for voiceovers or animations, on location sound, in studio sound, whatever the case, your audio is going to be a huge asset to the production. And if it's bad, you're going to completely misrepresent your content and people are going to write off the content before they actually get to the heart of it. So I'm creating this three part series on audio to help you get the best sound for your production possible. I've broken this up into three parts. The first part is on choosing your microphone. The second part is on optimizing your space and the third part is on processing your sound. Before we jump into the thick of it, I want to start off by thanking Rode Microphones. They've sponsored this video by sending me these three microphones that I'm going to be working with today. We're particularly going to delve into them uh, as examples of different microphones in this video, which is on choosing your microphone. But I approached Rode in the hopes that they would allow me to work with them for this video because they have an innovative range of products, a great range of affordability, they're extremely high quality and almost best of all, they're Australian. And anything Australian is better than everything else. Admittedly, I'm biased in this regard. I also need to preface by saying I'm not an audio engineer. I have no formal training, but I am a self-taught producer of content and presenter in content. So I've done animation, so I've done lots of voiceover work. I do presenting on my YouTube channel. I do streams. I've done live and on location interviews and vlogs. So I'm hoping that my experience and the lessons that I've learned, taught myself and learned from others in the process of doing all this will be helpful to you. So in this video, part one, we're going to talk about choosing the microphone that's right for you and your production. This can be pretty tricky or intimidating, especially if it's your first time producing content. Microphones come in different forms and specialize in different types, but I'm going to try and break this down into a, a pretty simple way of looking at it. There are predominantly two types of microphones, the dynamic type of microphone and a condenser microphone. Dynamic microphones are best in high sound level applications. They're durable and they're perfect, especially for things like instruments and live vocals. This is what most standard dynamic microphones look like and uh, they pick up sound reliably close to the diaphragm of the microphone. This means that for things like live events and presentations, having a dynamic microphone is going to pick up your voice better, especially because you're only going to be a few inches away from the microphone. Even pointing the microphone slightly up or away from the sound source is going to reduce the sound quality. Having it at a distance is going to reduce it even further. But this can be an advantage because if you're in a crowded room and you're a presenter, then it's only really going to pick you up. They're also in general pretty heavy duty and durable. Then we have condenser microphones. Now we're going to focus almost solely on these because for most of the applications that we're talking about, they are the most suitable kind of microphone. In almost all cases, they produce the best quality sound for podcasts, video content, voiceover content, and even live events that are recorded and produced later. Condenser microphones as opposed to dynamic microphones are highly sensitive. They pick up sound really well but they also require a separate source of power. This is called phantom power. Providing phantom power to these microphones can be done in a variety of ways and it depends on the microphone that you have. Most commonly phantom power is provided to condenser microphones from an external source. So in the case of my shotgun microphone here I can provide phantom power to the microphone by the use of my Zoom H4n. A device like this provides phantom power but also acts as an audio interface so if you want to record directly into a computer device for example you can do so through something like this. There are also USB mixers that achieve a similar result. Alternatively sometimes phantom power can be built inside the microphone itself so the version of the shotgun mic I have which is the Rode NTG4 Plus it's actually battery powered so you can put in batteries and have it provide its own phantom power and directly plug it into a recording device. 
This microphone is a USB condenser microphone. Something like this is extremely useful, especially for things like podcasts and streams, because it's really as simple as plugging in and recording and you're good to go. It's great for Skype calls or uh, voiceover work and things like that. I personally use the Rode Podcaster for streams and Skype calls because it's really immediate and simple to use. But in much of my video content, I don't like the visuals of having a microphone like this close to my face. It can be distracting to the video content itself. And that's where the shotgun mic comes in. I got the NTG4 Plus shotgun mic because then I have the benefits of an extremely sensitive and directional condenser microphone while having something that works better at a distance. Generally condenser microphones work best when they're close to the speaker or the source of audio. This is a rule of thumb for nearly all microphone recording. You want to get the audio source as close to the microphone as is practical. The third type of microphone I'm demonstrating in this video is called a lavalier microphone, also known as a lav. This model is the Rodelink Filmmaker Lab. And as you can see, I have this little box that I just hook into my pocket or on my belt. It's quite good because it replaces the onboard camera audio with the audio from this wireless system. Now there are different kinds of microphones than these three that I'm demoing here. The lav, the condenser studio microphone and the shotgun microphone. But these three kinds of microphone provide, in my opinion, the most diversity in application, but also the most utility. It also, of course, depends what your desired outcome is or what your format is that you're producing in. Condenser studio microphones like this, whether it's powered by XLR via phantom power or USB directly into your interface, are, as I mentioned, particularly good for voiceover work. The USB alternative is also great for streams and really simple computer applications. And they're what I would say a bit of an industry standard for video production, especially in studio video. So where people present in a room and they're speaking into a microphone in front of a computer or something like that, most of the microphones you'll see are studio condenser microphones. The reason for this is, in particular, if you're a speaker and you can be close to the microphone source, the audio quality is usually the cleanest and the prettiest, and it packs a bit more punch or warmth. Now, there are situations in which a lav or a shotgun might be more preferable, and the most notable example of this is in on-location recordings. Shotgun mics are great because you can get them further away from the audio source, and the directional aspect of a microphone is a key component of that. You can record the audio of a conversation or a presenter with a mic being at a little further of a distance, which enables cameras to get wider shots with a mic being still out of the shot. This is where in television and video productions, it's someone's entire job to hold a pole with a shotgun mic dangling from it and to turn that shotgun mic towards the source of audio that they're trying to capture while keeping the microphone out of shot. Now a lavalier mic or a lav mic is is useful in on-location recordings as well. The difference being that a shotgun mic can be pivoted and turned to an audio source to pick up different sources, whereas a lav mic is limited to where it is put. In most cases, a lav mic will be placed on the lapel in a pocket or on a collar of the person who is presenting or talking. And in some cases, a lav mic can actually be attached to the top or the side of someone's hair, which is actually something that was very common in the local theater companies that I used to join in on. There were lavalier microphones usually pinned an elastic band in people's wigs and in people's hair, which gets the mic as close as possible to the audio source, the speaker, the singer, the presenter. There is another version of what you might call a lav mic. You have headset mics, which are essentially the same thing, but this enables the microphone itself to be smaller because it is directly in front of the audio source, the mouth. And this is often something you'll see with people who run gym classes or things like that, where the head motion needs to be very free, but the audio needs to be very clear and direct. Let's say, for example, I wanted to interview people on location or at an event. The best, cheapest, and most reliable audio way to do that would be with a handheld dynamic microphone, but that also involves passing around the microphone uh, quite a lot. If that's not an issue, that's the way I would go. Otherwise, if the participants are pretty much set in stone and not moving around. And if I wanted to remove visual elements of the recording equipment from the video, I would go with lav or shotgun. How would I decide between these two microphones? I would choose lav or several lavs if there were several people in the video for two reasons. One, if I didn't have someone to handle a shotgun mic behind the camera and point it to whoever was talking at the time. And also if I can afford the setup to have several lavs and hook it into 
a system where I'm recording audio in one place. A shotgun microphone is great, but if you have a scenario where there are multiple sources of audio or multiple people talking, you're gonna want someone to be controlling it and turning it as they speak. The last thing I'm gonna talk about in regards to outdoor recording is wind, which can be a real problem because wind gets into the grill of the microphone and hits the diaphragm, rattling it and creating a really unpleasant sound. That was my impression of wind distortion in a microphone. I hope you enjoyed it. You can combat this by getting something called a wind sock, which you can put around the microphone, which is a very fluffy uh, encasement of the microphone. And most microphones also come with a foam case or cover that you can put around the microphone to help reduce this. It may not completely remove it, but it helps. Now these three types of condenser microphones are the kinds I decided to focus on in this video because they are the most directly applicable to my work scenario and to what I perceive to be most of my audience's work scenario. That being said, mics really do come in all shapes and sizes. And the exciting thing is they come in different ways of being applied as well. So there are different lav microphones that might need to be directly plugged into the source, but the one I'm using directly plugs into my DSLR and overrides its audio, which is a really great alternative. There are new and more flexible mic applications these days, and the more devices that record audio, the more innovative these applications become. For example, Rode has some brands of microphones that plug directly into your smartphone and uh, completely override your crap phone audio quality to get great on location and portable sound quality wherever you are. So anyway, that brings me to the end of my choosing your mic video. I hope this has been useful and somewhat informative for you. Make sure to check out the other two videos in this series. And uh, once again, another thank you to Rode for providing the microphones for this series. I highly recommend their products. So go check them out. If you're interested in microphones, it's definitely worth browsing and seeing their product range. Anyways, that's it for now, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, I'll see you later. Thanks for watching. Make sure to subscribe to my channel for new content every week. If you want to support my work and get some goodies for yourself, head over to my store for archives, ebooks, digital brushes, video courses, and more. If you enjoyed this video, here's a link to some more content you might like. Draw with Jazza is proudly sponsored by Adobe. Join the creative cloud today and get loads of incredible industry standard creative tools such as Photoshop, Animate, Premiere Pro and other apps for your computer or mobile device. That's it for now. Thanks for joining the arty party and until next time, I'll see you later.